On the 21st of September 2020, Airbus unveiled their pitch for what they hoped would become the world's first zero emission aircraft, using hydrogen as the fuel. Two years later, in November of last year, EasyJet and Rolls-Royce announced a successful ground test of a converted regional aircraft engine running on hydrogen. In March of this year, Californian firm Universal Hydrogen completed a successful test of the largest hydrogen plane so far, using hydrogen fuel cells on board a converted ATR-72 aircraft. It appears then that, in the race to decarbonise the aviation industry, hydrogen is what many big players are betting their money on. But like so many of these technologies bubbling to the surface on green agendas, hydrogen-powered flight is really nothing new. At the outbreak of the Korean War in the 1950s, the US Air Force found itself in desperate need of a jet-powered all-weather bomber. At the time, the piston-engine Douglas B-26 invaders were being used, which, although once formidable aircraft, had started to become outdated. But the Air Force needed a replacement quick, they couldn't start anything from scratch, and hence they only considered projects based on existing aircraft. In the end, they opted for the British-English Electric Canberra, which, in flying to the UK for the test, actually completed the first unrefueled jet-powered flight across the Atlantic. The first of the American-built Canberras, the B-57A, saw little modifications to the British aircraft. The most notable changes were the use of more powerful Wright J65 engines and a rotating bomb bay door to replace the original high-drag clamshell design. By the time the aircraft was complete, however, the hostilities in Korea had pretty much come to an end, and many of the aircraft left on the production line were instead converted to reconnaissance aircraft. With no immediate need then for a rapid further iteration of the design, a more sophisticated version of the bomber, the B-57B, entered development, now including all the changes that had previously been rejected on cost and schedule grounds. At around the same time, the outbreak of the Korean War had led to a surge in aeronautical research and development in the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, otherwise known as the NACA. The US Air Force laid particular importance on designing an aircraft that could operate at extremely high altitudes, a challenge that depended a lot on the fuel used by the plane. The main obstacle when approaching high altitudes was that the combustion efficiencies of the fuel were significantly lowered as the air became thinner and the supply of oxygen decreased. In the worst cases, this could lead to flameout, where the flame in the combustion chamber of a jet engine was extinguished causing the engine to fail. The altitude or ceiling at which this happened, however, varied depending on the fuel used in combustion. And it was this desire to fly at high altitudes combined with advancements in liquid hydrogen technology that made hydrogen, although once deemed unsuitable, an increasingly attractive fuel for aircraft propulsion. Someone who was especially pushing for hydrogen propulsion at the time was the associate director of the NACA Lewis Flight Propulsion Centre in Cleveland, Abe Silverstein. Hydrogen had often been rejected for use in smaller aircraft due to its low volumetric energy density. But in 1954, Silverstein jumped at the idea of using hydrogen in aircraft operating at high altitudes and low speeds, as these often had large wingspans and fuselages that would be able to accommodate the large fuel tanks required to store the hydrogen. The following year, the shared interests of the US Air Force and Silverstein's research collided, and so, in December 1955, a project codenamed Project B was set in motion to perform real tests on the feasibility of an airplane fuelled with liquid hydrogen. And the plane chosen for the project was, you guessed it, the B-57B bomber. The plan was to modify one of the aircraft's jet engines to be able to run on both hydrogen and regular fuel, which in this case was JP-4 kerosene. The plane would take off and climb to 16,400 metres on its regular fuel, after which one of the engines would be switched from JP-4 to hydrogen. The realisation of this project called for the design of three key systems, the tank, the heat exchanger and a regulator to control the flow of hydrogen to the engine. The left wing of the aeroplane held the hydrogen fuel tank, whilst the right side stored helium at high pressure. 
The helium had two uses, for pressurising the hydrogen gas, but also for purging, where it was flushed into the system to remove oxygen and prevent the formation of an ignitable mixture once combined with the fuel. It had been shown that gaseous hydrogen burned more easily in the B-57's engines, and hence a heat exchanger was designed to vaporise the liquid hydrogen before it entered the combustion chamber. The pilot also needed a way to throttle the fuel going to the engine, and due to the dual fuel system being operated, it seemed sensible to couple the hydrogen fuel regulator to the engine's original fuel control. The only real modifications to the engine itself were the addition of the hydrogen manifold and the injection tubes. The engine and control system as a whole were tested in an altitude wind tunnel, allowing the effects of the changing atmosphere to be observed. This confirmed the superiority of hydrogen in high altitude applications, as the engine running on JP4 fuel flamed out at 23,000 metres, whereas the engine running on hydrogen remained stable to the upper limit of the wind tunnel at 27,000 metres. The hydrogen fuel also performed better, with lower specific fuel consumption and a greater thrust produced at the engines. Then, finally, the day came. On the first flight in December 1956, the engine responded badly to the change in fuel, with the engine overspeeding and vibrating and consequently it was immediately shut down. Despite not performing as they had hoped, the first flight was, to an extent, a success, as it had proved that the engine could be quickly shut down and the hydrogen released safely. On the third flight, they opted to switch to hydrogen in two stages, running first on a mixture of both fuels simultaneously, before switching entirely to hydrogen. The pilots were happy with how the engine responded to throttle changes, and there, on just the third trial, the use of hydrogen as an aviation fuel had been demonstrated. Whilst the need for such a high altitude aircraft never actually materialised, the tests conducted on the B-57B had proven that hydrogen was suitable as jet fuel, and perhaps even more importantly, that it could be used safely as jet fuel. Enter the current day, and the aviation industry is again faced by an issue that calls for an alternative to conventional aviation fuels. With the accelerated development of both fuel cells and hydrogen combustion engines, it might not be too long before we see hydrogen fueled planes returning to the skies once again.